Okay, everybody, this section is still referencing um, the, the, the actions of the AV node and the bundle of Hiss. So we're still talking about the issues that occur between the atrias and then the ventricles. So we're talking about that junction. <clears throat> what we're looking at here with the junctional with with junctional rhythms usually people either struggle struggle with the junctional rhythms and how to name them or they struggle with the heart blocks so we're going to talk about what happens here in this section that loses communication between the atrias up top and then your ventricles down here on the bottom so when we talk about this particular item we're looking at here we have when we, we we ask what the rate is one let's see one two three four five six seven so the rate is 70. we've got that down <clears throat> you do have p waves qrs is narrow t wave after it that's the same across the board so the rhythm is regular and you have p waves <clears throat> excuse me but What happens when you look at the PR interval? If you remember, the PR interval needs to be less than 0 0.20. Excuse me, that should be 2. And if you look at this picture, find one that marches out, kind of links in. Right here is a good one. So here's the onset, and then here is where that PR interval ends. Is that space greater than 0 0.20? If you answered yes, then you are correct. No? All right, so what we did here is we just cleaned up the picture a little bit. Remember, we're talking about atrias up here and then your ventricles down here. So with this problem where you're seeing this increase in the PR interval to greater than 0 0.20, you're really seeing an issue with the way that electricity is being conducted between the AV and the bundle of Hiss to get it down here to the ventricles. So if you're dealing with this, you're going to have a loss of communication or a, a, a drop or a, a sustained drop in communication between the atrias and the ventricles. So it's slowed down. So what we're saying here is that this AV node is conducting the electricity but he's taking a little bit longer than normal to make that happen. As a result, that PR interval gets lengthened. People can live with this without any issues. Um, this is just the first in many heart blocks that can occur. So this is our first heart block, and it is called a first degree heart block. first degree heart block and this is the only one this seems to be the biggest problem I have with students remember this is the only one that you give it a first name so who's still in charge of the rhythm we still have a P wave right we know that to be a fact because you can't have a PR interval that's extended if you don't have a P wave so you got a P wave you got your QRS you know it's within normal limits. You know that, the, excuse me, the QRS is within normal limits. And you're looking at this, you see this. This is a sinus rhythm because we said the rate was 70, right? And the P wave is in charge. So this is the only rhythm in the heart blocks that you would give it a first name. So it's sinus rhythm with, that's the little signal for with, a first degree heart block. And that is how you determine the first degree heart block. It is just an extended length, you can see it here to here, it's greater than one big block. So that means that it is a first degree heart block. And that's how you name it.